You're looking at a very rusted out cab corner on my 2001 F350. Now if you're wondering if I live in a rust belt, well, I do, and most of our vehicles rust out very quickly because we use a lot of salt on the roads. There are some good ways to prevent that, and after we get this truck back into a presentable shape, we're going to show you guys how to do that. We're going to use an oil-based type of undercoating that I think you're going to like, so you're going to want to like and subscribe. Now to address this cab corner, there's a couple of things that we want to point out. To do this professionally, you would replace this cab corner, and you would also replace the internal cab corner, and you would replace the backing plate of the cab corner as well. You would cut it all out, and you would weld it in. That is the professional way to do this, and that will make it last its longest. What we're going to do today is a little bit of a shortcut. We're going to cut out the corner of this cap corner, not a big deal. We're going to put a new one in place. We're gonna kind of do a hybrid glue and a hybrid weld. We're gonna use a 3M product that is designed to glue panels on, and we're gonna do a little bit of welding as well. We're gonna kind of cut some corners because, well, literally we're gonna cut some corners. We wanna leave the hinge placement intact and we don't wanna really affect a lot of this. Our cab corner sitting over there on the tire is a complete cab corner. But we don't wanna replace the complete cab corner because I really don't wanna affect this area too much. So we're going to cut down here around the bottom underneath the hinge. We're probably gonna go up just a little bit to stay away from some of the rust on the bottom of this. We're gonna come around and wrap it around the back side. We're going to cut into this a little bit and, and flush mount this whole corner piece of that cab corner. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. But we're going to overlap the outside and we're going to glue it on top of it. Now again, you could weld this in place. We're cutting some corners here. We basically want to make this truck last a little bit longer. We want it to look nice. We want to be quick. We don't want to spend a lot of money because while well, this truck is 20 years old, it has over 300,000 miles. It's just not worth my time nor my money to put all this work into it. But again, I think for a very little effort, a little bit of time, we can make it look nice. And then if we treat what existing rust is already on that truck with some type of oil-based treatment, it'll last a very long time, or at least the body will outlast the life of the truck. That's what we're after. I have already drilled out all the spot welds. They do make a spot weld drill bit, and that allows you to take out the front side of a spot weld and separate things. But in this case, it's just not necessary. I used a regular drill bit and drilled all the way through because what that also does is it allows us, if we want to, to take a welder and weld behind the new pieces in place. And that is very acceptable. You can fill those holes back up, sand them down, make it look really nice. I've taken a silver Sharpie and marked where I want to cut, and I'm just going to use a little body saw to make those cuts. You can see here how I'm going to kind of dry fit this to make sure everything lines up. We're overlapping everything from here back and everything from here down we're going to butt weld. And you can see I have a little bit of a mistake here. I have a larger gap here than what I really want. And that's, that's kind of okay. We can fix that. Everything else lines up pretty decently when you tighten it all up, but uh, we will need to address that. The options are we can lay a piece of metal behind it. And uh, we can either do the old rivet trick and then fill it in with weld, which is probably what we're going to do. Or if you're really good with a MIG welder, you can build up the edge and keep filling it in. The problem with that is the metal is very, very thin and it's really easy to overheat and warp. So we're just going to put a backer behind it and then we'll just kind of fill it in with weld and then we should be good to go. The glue we're going to use is made by 3M. It is 3M panel bond glue. I will put a link down below. The glue is separate from the gun. The gun is more of like a caulking tube gun, but it's basically a two-part epoxy. There is some glass beads also inside, very, very small. Uh, and that what that does is it keeps everything gapped right because this glue needs a little bit of a gap. So if you were to squeeze it all out, well, that would be bad. So the manufacturer has put these little teeny tiny glass beads inside the glue so that when you clamp it and get everything tight, it is appropriately gapped. Now this glue works best on bare metal. So you wanna make sure you sand all the paint and primer off any pieces that you're gluing together. The nozzle is self-mixing. So it is absolutely mixing the two parts as we squeeze it out of the gun. The nozzle is also sacrificial. So keep that in mind. If you wanna use this for tomorrow, you'll have to throw the nozzle away and use another one. Now I have the corner in place and glued and basically every couple of inches along the seams or anywhere where it is glued I put some rivets. The rivets are just temporary it just keeps everything tight until the glue cures. It takes 24 hours for this glue to cure and I highly suggest that you let it cure for 24 hours before you start working with it. Now after the glue dries we would drill out all the rivets because we don't want these in here. First of all these are aluminum rivets and again aluminum and steel causes corrosion so you don't want them in there. Then we would take our butt joint here and weld it back up. We need to be very 
very careful when we're welding the butt joint because there's a couple things at play. You don't really want to get the glue hot. I know over here we're going to have to, but there is a lot of seam here that's holding this on. And you also want to be careful when you're welding the butt seam because this warps really easy. So you need to be in and out with your MIG very quickly and then uh, let it cool down before you move on. So right now I'm just stitching it in. I'm basically putting a little dot about every half an inch or so. I'm keeping them all spaced apart because we don't want to get this too hot in fear that it might warp. We're going to keep filling them in and then we'll grind everything down smooth. Now that we have the seam stitched up pretty well and grind it down, we're going to use a little bit of Bondo and clean it up. I've got my first layer of body filler in. I like to use something that's a little better than Bondo. I'm using Bondo glass. It's kind of like tiger hair. I'll put a link to tiger hair down below, but basically it's fiberglass strands and a Bondo like residue. The difference is it's fully waterproof. I like to do the first layer in that. I think it's just a little stronger and it holds up a little bit better. The rest of the layers, we're just going to use Bondo or any other regular body filler. And just like that, through the magic of video, this corner is complete. Now there is a little bit of work left. We'll have to do a little bit of skim coating and a little bit of cleanup, but the major stuff is done. It's gonna need sanded down. Actually, the whole truck's gonna need sanded down, primed, and then painted. This corner should be on here for a very long time. Don't forget to like and subscribe because we have a lot more to do with this truck. In fact, we have to put the entire interior back in it. We have a lot of cool little upgrades we will be doing. So follow along. I think you're gonna enjoy this series.